Hey, everybody, it's Allie, and welcome to our YR chat for Sunday, December 27th, 2015. It was a light and lovely Christmas filled week in The Young and the Restless. Victor Newman learned the true meaning of Christmas for probably the 12th time. <laughs> I mean, I don't even, I can't even count how many times YNR has probably done the Scrooge McVictor thing, <laughs> but of course I loved it. He spent all week working, 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 and then at the very end decided to embrace the Christmas spirit and put down his spreadsheets and go to the Christmas party. <laughs> and in that spirit, I am doing kind of a light, low-key, abbreviated, audio-only version of our YNR chat. I'm a workaholic, too. I'm very Victor newman E. If I have any free time, I'm going to fill it with something productive. And today, I'm going to try to embrace that idea and take a step back and just keep it kind of on the light. I hope you guys will forgive me. Um, I'm still going to do all of the website stuff and the games and all of that good Good stuff, but I am just snuggled up on my couch. If you need a visual, I'm snuggled up on my couch in my monogrammed Christmas uh, pajamas. <laughs> They're red and they have footies, and it says Allie on the on the collar. No, I'm just kidding. But did you notice that Jack had monogrammed uh, cr Christmas pajamas at the very end of Thursday's show? I was laughing so hard about that. I, in reality, I'm sitting here with my Afghan. And my sweatpants and my sweatshirt. <laughs> Oh, but I've got all the Christmas stuff still up. I didn't yank it down on December uh, 27th yet, but I will <laughs> very soon. So I really did appreciate that YNR built the stories for the week around the three central families that we have remaining. Then we have the Newmans, the Abbots, and the Winners families. Um, I had put up a thread at yrchat.com last week to for us to share our Christmas YNR memories. And to me, so many of them come down to Catherine Chancellor and how it's, it probably is just thinking of how much I miss that woman and the way her home was decorated and the way she, everything about her and her life and her home was to the nines. So we were chatting a little bit about that on the, the website this past week. But of course, the Newmans and the Abbots and the Winters are the three core families that we have left and I really did enjoy just spending some low key time with them. I was glad Weiner kept the drama to a minimum. I did shed a few tears. <laughs> A few Christmas tears. <laughs> oh, it was good. And I will, I have to start out by saying I love having the top of the tower that this space that we are to believe is on the roof of Newman Enterprises that building burnt halfway to the ground I don't know how they got it all reconstructed already it's a Christmas miracle <laughs> but I love having it Nikki through this lavish private family Christmas party on the top of the tower it was decorated so beautifully I mean I can't even give props enough to YNR's amazing set decorations. It just looked sl just like the most classiest Christmas party you could ever imagine. Companies don't do Christmas parties anymore. If you if you are with a company who does Christmas parties, you should appreciate it because a, a lot of them don't anymore. And even though this was a private family affair, I did really like seeing some professional decorations there. It was really lovely. Um, <clears throat> of course, Everyone is wondering, is Victor going to come to the party? He's sitting in his office. Everybody tries to get him to come. He is 
focused on needing to rebuild his company from the ground up from the ashes, literally this time. And absolutely no one's able to convince him. And everyone tries, including Nikki. Oh my gosh, did you guys see that flashback of, I mean, I wonder how long ago that flashback was from. I didn't have any context to be able to look that up, but I'm guessing that was a 20 year old close up on Victor and Nikki's face as they were sharing a Christmas together, the way she looked at him in his eyes. We don't even see that anymore. We, I mean, the way she, the way Nikki looks at Victor these days seems to have like an eye roll. It's kind of a, 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 a by default, yes, I love you and I put up with you kind of look in her eyes. But oh my, that from that flashback, she was still so very in love with him and he was so very in love with her. And I'm sure he gave her a, an incredible piece of jewelry <laughs> that Christmas. And flash forward to this Christmas, he's sitting in his office. He refuses to budge, uh, despite Victoria, Adam, Noah, everybody trying to get him to move. In fact, I will say one of the most wonderful scenes of the week was Billy coming in there and confronting Victor. And in some ways, I think that Billy might have been more influential in moving Victor than any of the main family members, because Billy comes in there and he says, look at you, Victor. Look at you sitting here in your office alone on Christmas Eve. You're no better than me. I mean, yeah, Victoria's kicked me out and I'm separated from my family right now, but at least I want to be with my family. You'd rather be cooped up in an office surrounded by dollar signs and your picture on the wall instead of being with the ones that you love. Uh, I really thought that Burgess was was giving it his all this week. He was great. Oh man, Victor said something to him like, you know, you're really starting to piss me off. <laughs> I was shocked a little bit because we don't usually hear Victor saying stuff like that. It was kind of a shocking moment, but it was, of course, the will of young faith that eventually got Victor to put down his pencil and go upstairs to the party. I mean, what faith wants, faith Faith gets. This is just another instance. <laughs> But it was cute the way he had her spinning around in his chair and just the, the simplicity of the lesson he learned that night was really sweet. She's spinning around in the chair thinking of how all of this could be hers someday that, you know, Victor has promised this to her as part of her inheritance. And she's thinking about, oh, how wonderful it would be to be sitting behind this desk and in this chair. But wait a minute, if I can't be with the people that I love, I don't know if I really Really want the chair. It was sweet and it was well written. And I want to make sure to say that YNR does their, you know, their writing is, is good right now. I appreciate the large action drama, the intense drama, just as much as the next guy. But these little moments of dialogue in a quiet week really shouldn't go unnoticed or or um, unmentioned. I thought it was very nice. Uh, Victor goes upstairs to his holiday party. He's embraced by everyone, of course. Uh, and I, I really liked that he managed to give Give Noah a little compliment. Victor comes up to give the the toast in wrapping up the Newman side of, of, of the Christmas episodes for the week by giving a toast. And he made sure to acknowledge Noah and the fact that he's back at the company now. He's doing a good job. Uh, there was a little twisty moment in the week where uh, ugh, uh, that Noah and Victor are working together to try to make it seem like Noah is the low man on the totem pole to Luca in order to kind of lure him in and make him feel safe and make him feel like he's being appreciated. And so Noah did what Victor wanted him to do. Of course, Noah wasn't in on it. I, I just keep feeling bad for Noah because he does seem like the guy on the outside. He is the low man on the totem pole. He hasn't put in his time. Um, he hasn't really gone and gotten any kind of business education that would help him become a more valuable asset set to the company, so it does kind of feel like he's being used a little bit, which makes me sad. He's being used on multiple levels, frankly. I, I tell you, 
As much as I really like Marissa, and I'm totally into Marissa and Luca, uh, and and I and I suppose Noah as part of that triangle, it, it works for me very much so. But boy, she's a bad girl. She really is. I wouldn't if I if if my son was getting trying to get involved with Marissa. You better believe that I would be warning him against her too. She uses sex as a weapon, and it works. This and it doesn't even take very much she, she she's been with luca and bonding over their child for i don't know what the equivalent of our time frame is to their time frame but surely it hasn't been more than a few weeks and she seems like she's falling back in love with luca or at least she's falling into luca's bed they had sex this week and the to- the difference here the twist is she wanted it Oh, let us not forget to mention, finally, the first interaction between Adam, since he's been revealed as Adam, and Sharon. I was surprised because we did a YNR chat poll maybe two weeks ago now, where uh, we were asking if, if you guys were interested in a coupling between Sage and Adam, and quite a few people said, well, you know, I'm still holding out hope for Sharon and Adam, and I'm kind of wondering if maybe YNR might be thinking that too. I mean, at the very least, this was a great slow week in order to reestablish that relationship. I never got over Adam and Sharon. I really didn't. I've said it many times, and even though, and it is it's is what caused me to have trouble moving forward on Adam and Chelsea's relationship. I'm, I've am i accepted Adam and Chelsea, but they're, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of curious. I, I feel a little more compelled to see Sharon with either Nick or Adam than Dylan. I'm not sure why, and I'm not sure who the best match for Dylan would be. And I'm not saying that Sharon and Dylan aren't a good match, but I worry about the state of their relationship after the baby switch has been revealed. And I'm curious to know how, you know, an element that I hadn't thought of is how uh, Sharon's connection to this child, Sully slash Christian, uh, and her connection to Adam, uh, being as that it's actually his son, I wonder if that's going to facilitate some closeness between those two. And it is something that I missed, even if it is just on a friendship level, because Sharon looked at at, uh, Gabriel's face for the first time, knowing that it is Adam, and she just said, you know, I wish you would have felt like you could have told me we used to be so close. And in this moment, she's holding his son, even though he doesn't know it. And I, I just, it, it occurred to me that that might be an interesting direction for this storyline to push. I, I, I tell you, I, I <laughs> how about we do a knockdown, drag out fight between Sharon and Chelsea and Sage over Adam? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just let the hair fly and make the fiercest woman win. <laughs> that works for me. Well, you know, maybe what it is that we could be building toward with Dylan is something between Dylan and Chelsea. I appreciated that YNR took a moment to acknowledge that Dylan's been duped before as far as, you know, believing that a child was his that didn't turn out to be. J- Dylan and Chelsea were married at one point. They were in love at one point. She was trying to pull off a huge con on him, and it messed him up for one thing. And the relationship really didn't have a whole lot of closure. So it was nice that YNR took a moment to have those two talking to one another. And, I, and that also jogs a little bit of, of curiosity in my mind, too, as to whether or not we might see maybe like a Chelsea, Dylan, Nick triangle. 
I don't know. I mean, there's no doubt that Chelsea is going to continue to fight for Adam, continue to fight for her marriage. Uh, there was a moment at the very end of Thursday's episode where Chelsea and Adam are at the Christmas party, and she has just seen Adam holding sh- Sharon, in quotes, son, and she looks at Adam and she says, you know, I think maybe we're ready. Maybe we need to have another baby, which is such a wonderful idea. I absolutely love that. I mean, it's been it's been a couple of years since Chelsea's churned out a child. <laughs> so maybe that's what we need to see next. Another nice little pull that YNR gave to us as a Christmas present, and it was a Christmas present for me at least, was focusing in on the character of Kyle a little bit. I think I've been critical of Kyle, and I think we all have, and certainly YNR brought on the character to be a match for Summer, and then we know that the actor went to recurring status, so it seems as if YNR decided not to develop around him uh, very much, but I just wanted to take a quick moment to say I appreciated that YNR gave Kyle that dialogue talking to Summer about his mother. That's an important piece of, of YNR history. His mother, Diane, was a big part of the show for quite a while, uh, and there's a lot that I forgot about her. I I forgot that she was an architect and Kyle was talking about the fact that she, you know, she gave him this, uh, this, you know, he remembered her being on site at one of her buildings. She was constructing and creating a Christmas surprise for him. And I didn't remember that she was an architect. I remember mostly the emotional, um, drama and the fighting over Jack and Victor. And I, I feel like that's, I mean, Victor and Jack were definitely fighting over Diane, even though I don't think Victor ever really wanted Diane. He just wanted her because Jack wanted her. Uh, and uh, and there was a question, I'm almost certain, over Kyle's paternity when he was first born. I just wish that YNR had not killed uh, Diane's character. And not to take it too far back, but not only do I wish they hadn't killed the character of Diane, but I really enjoyed Mara West as Diane. I think it was totally unnecessary to remove her from the landscape. She could have been Diane, whether it was Mara West or someone else. Take it back to one of the original actresses. There were two, I think. Um, uh, she, she, she could have, Diane could have been a great long-term character. She has to- so many ties to so many places on the show. Um, and, and, and not only that, but I think she would have made a phenomenal rivalry for Phyllis right now. Phyllis is is pretty well stomping through uh, Genoa City un, uh, unopposed. She doesn't have, really have a good rivalry, I suppose, other than Victor. Uh, but Phyllis is doing her best to mend fences between Billy and Jack. And I'm glad that she is. I guess a lot of the discord between Jack and Billy may have just been in order to create sort of a Christmas miracle between them, uh, because Phyllis Phyllis decides to uh, trick Jack into coming to the Abbott cabin, and uh, he doesn't know it, but Billy's there, and she forces them into a conversation about their relationship, and it was good. It, It felt healing to me. It got pretty dark. It got quite serious. Um, Jack even thinking that Billy might be contemplating suicide. And certainly the holidays are really hard for anyone who has lost someone very important to them. I'm sure a lot of you are going through that this week. So it was... um, I think a, a, something good to work into the show there that Billy is still going through and processing the loss of his daughter and Jack made a point to try to talk about that with him and 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 I mean Billy was a gambler and a drunk before the Delia thing ever happened but Jack really tried to zero in on him and find out what not only what the real problem is but what can we do to fix it and the first step in that is just getting for 
forgiveness for the, the, the people that you've hurt. I think that is one of the 12 steps, right? Um, um, getting forgiveness from the people that you've hurt. And Jack does ultimately forgive Billy, but there is still the matter of Victoria. Victoria has had her heart ripped apart by this man on more than one occasion. And it is hard to love someone who is self-destructive. Maybe that's something also that you guys identify with as I do. Um, you can't fix someone else. You know, they need to be able to do the hard work themselves. And Billy does go back and forth between really, really making an effort and trying. I loved, of course, seeing my Jill come back onto the scene. I love Jill. I love Colin. I love them together. I just got such a kick out of her saying to, or out of him saying to her, who would have thought of all the relationships in this town that ours would be one of the most solid. It's true. And, 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 um, I find them to be so enjoyable. I know you guys were probably applauding when you saw Jill on your screen. She made sure to nail Victoria. She tried to pin her down and say, well, you know, I think you need to give my son another chance because in the end, what else is there but love? You know, what, what else do you have? If, you know, if you can go be like your father, you can go ahead and build a company and focus on things like uh, profit margins. But at the end, what really matters is your family and your husband, and he's the father of your, your children. And if Jack can forgive him after losing a half a billion dollars, don't you think maybe you could forgive him too? So it, it definitely gave Victoria... A nudge in the right direction. Billy did try a little bit. He snuck into the house, and she wasn't expecting to see him there, and she was mad at him at first, uh, and she, she has a wall. Victoria is an ice queen, so she has this wall of ice that's always up around her, but Billy has always been someone who's able to melt it. it that That's her, you know, that that's the hot spot for, for her. He has it. So she does decide not to let him leave, and I don't know if it means that they're back on the road to a long-term uh, reunion, but for at least one night, Billy and Victoria seem to be getting along with their children. Um, and you know, I I love Billy and Victoria. She really, really tried after Delia died to connect with him and to stop him from going down this destructive path, and she just wasn't successful. Uh, he did it anyway, so I understand her reticence. I, I get it. I get why Victoria was not leaping to forgiveness over Billy, um, but I did, I did like that they decided to put it aside and maybe focus on the love at least for one night, and the same was said to be true for the Abbots. I was so happy happy also to see Tracy show up in town and I had um, heard that she was coming so I was bracing myself and I mean that she's where I started losing it Tracy's where the tears started coming <laughs> Just the way she talked to Billy, uh, put him in his place, the way she um, just talked to everybody. Oh my gosh, she got, she, they um, they surprised Jack and Phil. Jack and Phyllis were like laying on the floor next to the fireplace, like probably just around sex. And the whole Abbott family like cr crashes in on them as a surprise. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my God, thank goodness we were clothed. This could have been really awkward, Jack, if your whole family just walked in on us. I mean, they could have been in the process of her crying out loud. <laughs> oh, but Tracy comes in with Abby and Stitch and Kyle and Summer, and they all surprise Jack and Phyllis. And Tracy just gets up close on Jack and and just you know just gives him the wisdom that he needs. This is a little piece of John. You know, Tracy seems to me to display most of the qualities. She's probably wouldn't you say? Would you say Tracy's the most like John? Because John always had a very uh, forgiving, a very benign, a very comforting 
presence about him, and I and I I never got the impression from John that he was a, a, a like I don't know like a cutthroat kind of guy. I don't even think there was ever a period of his character where he was particularly cutthroat in the way that Jack and Ashley sometimes can be. So it seems to me that Tracy is the most like John. She's probably the biggest connection to him, and I lost it when uh, when she threw her arms over Jack and and that the and the whole thing developed into this wonderful Abbott family Christmas. They're all just sitting around. Jack was giving his speech as the leader of this family, as the head of this this family, which is what his role should be, is supposed to be, is what John bequeathed to him. Um, and it was just such a cozy little family moment. Everybody had their arms around each other. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but they were all in their Christmas jammies. I almost forgot to mention that Ashley showed up to the Abbott family Christmas. Of course, I don't think I included her um, in my list of people who were there. But yes, Ashley was there at the at the big Christmas gathering. Uh, but before that, she was pulling a Victor and doing some bin- burning of the Christmas Eve midnight oil with Dr. Neville down in the lab. <laughs> I guess she didn't really want to leave him either. I was glad that Y&R focused on the budding of that relationship this week and last week's poll question should Ashley be getting involved with Dr. Neville 90% of you said yes 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 <laughs> but for those 10% who say no I want you to tell me why what is it specifically are you thinking that Dr. Neville uh Simon you guys told me last week I was like racking my brain to remember his name Simon um do you think that he is someone who's going to harm Ashley so you're kind of answering no because that you don't want them together because you think he's going to cause her some problem or is it just that you're not feeling the chemistry or you're not thinking that these two actors would work together or I'd love to hear from those who uh, actually didn't want them to get together I I'm I just I've said it. It's, I've made my, my feelings on that very clear last week. I really like Ashley and Simon. I think it's a, an interesting pair, and I'm glad that YNR didn't have Ashley grab him up and pull him into the Abbott family Christmas right away, because she could have. I think she felt bad leaving him there, um, and, and I just, I'm, I'm glad that Weiner's going to build it a little bit slower before we just thrust them into a relationship together. I, d- I think it's a leap of belief here that Ashley's getting these headaches again and that whoever her regular orthodox doctors are are telling her that there's nothing they can do. She took a phone call. She's getting more headaches and she took a phone call from one of her doctors and she's basically saying they couldn't do anything and she's going, no, but I can't tell my family. No, I will not tell my family. (laughs) I guess I'm just going to have to go with the leap on that, but it just makes it more critical that she finds a cure because she's not only wanting to help other people, but she's kind of trying to save her own life now. She negotiates with Jack to get the project some office space in the lab, and so they are going to be working in that big, beautiful set now, which I, I think that's such a great use of that set. I hadn't thought about it. It's a way to incorporate something we've already seen as opposed to building something new and I think some love is definitely going to be um, uh, b- brewing we'll, we'll say they were kind of having a uh, they, they're already showing little pieces of that with uh, Ashley and, and Neville having drinks out of their beakers <laughs> this week it was kind of neat um, the other way that as we kind of talked about last week it's going to interconnect with uh, Devon and Neil and Hillary's story is we're already starting to see it because Devon is bankrolling this whole thing. Neil is overseeing it uh, as as far as Devon's interests go. Uh, (laughs) Neil ends up hiring Gwen as an assistant because she's been fired from Jabot since they are being forced to downsize and Hillary is forcing her way 
way into this new company, even though Neil does not want her there. We're going to definitely see some more heat between Hillary and Neil in and around that lab. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Neil and Hillary were the first ones to get it on in that lab. In the interest of calling it like it is, Colin really called Kane out on where we are with his relationship with his wife. Colin said, so, okay, so you're sleeping over at Lily's house on Christmas Eve so that you can give the twins one more perfect Christmas, but you're not sleeping in the same room as Lily. You're not sleeping together, obviously, but at the same time, you're not divorcing her. So what is this? And and I liked that Colin just simply said, you know, it sounds to me, son, like you're you're just confused. And Kane acknowledged that. They kind of had this toast, leaving it on a note of, well, Kane still loves Lily. He is putting the brakes on getting back together with her because the trust has been broken, but he is in a holding pattern. He doesn't quite seem ready to give up, but he also doesn't quite seem ready to do the hard work that it's going to take in order to get their relationship back where it needs to be, get their family back where it needs to be. But then there's Neil. <laughs> Neil did a pretty good job of giving them also a shove. <laughs> the, I guess the fathers and law were the cupids the christmas cupids this week because neil was hanging out with Lillian Kane on Christmas Eve along with the kids. And when, you know, it was very awkward. Lillian Kane are, oh, they're kind of tripping over each other and, and clearly still attracted to each other. And then the, pa the passion between them is still there. The problem is on the foundation. They've got a foundational crack. And I think, I, presumably, Neil believes that if they can just come together on the emotional level, that that's what's going to help them repair their foundation. And of course, I agree. <laughs> there was a, a moment where he, he lets the, the kids uh, help him put up a mistletoe and Lily and Kane aren't expecting it and they step under the mistletoe and they think they're going to get out of it and Neil helps facilitate the, them going through with it for the kids, of course, and Lily and Kane share this passionate kiss. <laughs> so I, I, it appears that that we are headed toward a Lily and Kane reunion. I I can only assume because there really is no there is no other um, obstacle or uh, pairing. I suppose that that I'm seeing on the horizon. I don't see why in our giving us any hints that they're going to pair Kane with anyone else, give him a reason to make the, the clean break. Lily has already said she wants to stay with Kane, and now Joe's out of the picture. Uh, I'm going to assume that Joe's permanently out of the picture, so I, there, I don't see any love interest for Lily on the horizon. So my guess is that YNR is slowly building us back uh, toward the reunion of this couple. But my poll question for this week for you is, do you want that? Do you want to see Lily and Kane reunited or is it time to move on? You can go to yrchat.com if you would like to cast your vote in that poll. And I'm pretty sure that that's a poll that I've had up before. But Lily and Kane, they're, they're a couple that they make up, they break up. They're sort of the Victor and Nikki of the Winters family. I'm not so sure I made Santa's nice list this year. <laughs> well, not me, Allie. I definitely made Santa's nice list this year. I was a very good girl <laughs> all year, and I was rewarded. But that is last week's Who Said It. Uh, and the person who's not so sure that she made Santa's nice list this year was Phyllis. I'm kind of surprised that so many people got this right. Uh, Sharita, Katie, Connor, Victor Victoria. Victoria and Aaron all got it right. Um, I just thought, gosh, that's so obscure. I don't know if anybody's going to get it, but you guys were very close watchers last week. Let's see if you can get this week's Who Said It. Um, I... 
<laughs> I'm going to continue along with the Christmas theme for one more week. I got to get, you know, get these Christmas quotes out there into the light <laughs> and let you guys guess them. So this week's Who Said It quote is, what a helpful, sexy elf you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I can I can assure you it was a, a very wonderful little moment. You guys might have got this one because you might have been zeroed in on this. What a helpful, sexy elf you are. <laughs> Go to yrchat.com if you want to uh, leave your guess for this week's Who Said It and, um, and vote in that poll too. I'm so curious to know where we are uh, in the uh, in the in the in the the, the story of Lily and Kane and what the fans really want. I have been really loving reading this introductions uh, blog post at YRChat.com where fans of YNR and YNR Chat are going to the website and kind of leaving their little introduction, a little more info about themselves. I've been just really so happy to see so just to learn more about so many of you. Um, Char had left a comment, uh, I think just this past week and had mentioned that in addition to being a YNR fan, she's a huge Star Wars geek. And uh, I'm. she said she already saw the new movie like three times already. I just wanted to mention that I did. I never see movies, especially not in the theater. And I wouldn't have if I, if I, I just, I sort of wanted to participate and be able to have something to talk about at Christmas. So um, I did go see the new Star Wars movie. And it's so funny. I just, I, I'm mentioning it here because everything really does does come back to soap opera. I mean, I'm watching this movie and I'm like, this is just like a soap opera. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's like comic books or an evening drama or a big movie like that. It's all soap opera. There was uh, no spoilers here, there, but probably the big climactic, big surprise scene of the movie. Uh, of course, there were so many, but <laughs> one of the, the big sort of showdowns at the end of, of the movie, um, I... I I knew what was coming like I mean like like probably I, I was on to it like a good five minutes before because like I get the beats of drama I was like oh I, you can't fool me no 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 <laughs> I've been watching my NR for over 20 years you are not gonna pull this on me I see what you're doing I see what this twist is about to be <laughs> so and it's funny because I I'm I'm I was talking uh, after the movie just about all the many different ways that it's just like a soap opera and I was thinking it the entire time so uh, that's that I just thought you guys might find that funny in case any of you guys saw it and 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 thought the same thing so anywho I think that's gonna do it for for me for this week oh my goodness I I Christmas just really wore me out to be honest with you I there was a part of me that I think expected it to be more low-key and instead I just ended up running ragged I mean just as far as getting up and going and rushing and all that stuff it was not very relaxing cooking and I mean I eaten I mean I cannot even tell you the amount of food that I have eaten, just the sheer amount of cream cheese <laughs> that I have ingested over the course of the past week is nauseating if I actually step back and think about it. <laughs> I mean, the, what I made alone, I used four bricks of cream cheese just in the stuff that I made. I mean, I took, I took a cream cheese dessert to like three different functions <laughs> and four with four different bricks and, and of course one stayed home. So I made four cream cheese pans of cream cheese dessert <laughs> uh, and not only that but like then it's in cream cheese and cheese but I don't know if does everybody else's family cook with it like cream cheese and everything there is a cheese ball I mean it's in everything rice potatoes doesn't matter oh it's been an absolutely insane amount of food the next time you guys see me I'm probably going to be 250 pounds <laughs> It is hard. As someone who's gone through a weight loss, it is hard to navigate all of that holiday food. And I'm not done yet. There's Christmas cookies on the porch. <laughs> oh, man. 
I need a break. I need to get back to some basics. Um, and I, you know, I, I shoot, I, I think more than anything, I'm just really looking forward to having a little bit of time today to just not think, just lay down, chill out here on the couch and play with my new Christmas presents. <laughs> so I hope that you guys do forgive me. Um, I, I, you know, I put in a lot of work on a, on a weekly basis for YNR chat and I just thought, you know, I'm going to give myself a break this week. I am thinking I'll probably do full everything next week, but there's a chance I might not. Honestly, like, I just kind of feel like I want to have just a, 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 maybe even an extra hour or two. If that makes a difference in my sanity, I might do it. Uh, but I, I'm planning to do full YNR chat with video and everything next week, but we'll see where we are. I know you guys understand. I mean, shoot, even Victor Newman takes a day off here and there. <laughs> <laughs> but I will uh, I will definitely be back next Sunday to uh, say hi and chat about the show no matter what. Um, I, I can't believe it, but this is going to be the last YNR chat for 2015. Wow. I mean, it just flew by. Just like every other year, just just fl flew by. I hope that you guys had a chance to spend some time with your family and that you're taking some time to relax for yourself if you possibly can because we make ourselves nuts 360, you know, four or five days a year. Let's just, let's take one day to, to kind of relax a little bit and we're going to start anew in 2016. It'll be a whole new year of YNR and a whole new year of YNR chat. I love you guys so much. I hope everybody has a happy new year and I'll wish you happy new year again next week.